Effective Nuclear Charge The electric force on valence electrons. First thing is, opposite charges attract. So a plus will attract a minus, and a minus attracts a plus. So the valence electrons are attracted to the protons in the nucleus. Then we have like charges repel. So the valence electrons are repelled by the inner electrons. Atoms of an element are often depicted showing the total number of electrons in each energy level. And if you look over here, this looks very much like the Bohr model, right? Where this is going to be n equals 1 right here. This is the inner orbit. And then this would be n equals 2. And now neon has, let's see, 10 electrons. It has two electrons in the inner energy level. That's here. That would be your 1s2. And then it has eight electrons in the outer energy level. So that's your 2s2 and 2p6. These outer electrons are called valence electrons. Very important. That's where all the action happens. In a multi-electron atom, electrons are both attracted to the positive protons in the nucleus and repelled by the other electrons. The nuclear charge that an electron experiences depends on both. For example, the valence electron of sodium, right over here, is attracted to the positive nucleus, but is repelled by the negative inner electrons. So we have one valence electron. There are 11 protons in the nucleus attracting the valence electron with a charge of plus 11. The 10 inner shell electrons repel the valence electron with a charge of negative 10. So the net charge, you add those two together. You have plus 11 plus a minus 10, which is the same thing as 11 minus 10, and you get plus 1. The net charge acting on the valence electron is plus 1. The inner shell electrons prevent the valence electron from feeling the full attractive force of the positive protons in the nucleus. In other words, the inner electrons are shielding the valence electrons from the nucleus. So the 10 inner electrons prevent the one valence electron from feeling the full attractive force of the 11 protons. We're going to call this phenomenon the effective nuclear charge. And the effective nuclear charge is the amount of charge that the outer or valence electron actually feels. We have a little formula here. The effective nuclear charge is Z, which is the atomic number, minus S. That's the shielding constant. That's the number of inner electrons that shields the valence electrons from the protons. So for sodium, which is what we've been working with, we have 11, and that's what Z is equal to. And then there's 10 inner electrons. There you go. That's your shielding constant. 11 minus 10 is 1. So 1 is the effective nuclear charge for sodium. Beryllium, boron, and carbon are all in the same period of the periodic table, right? That's the horizontal thing. Compare their shielding constants. Well, they're both 2. Why? We'll see on the next slide. Elements in the same period, same period, have the same shielding constant because their valence electrons are located in the same energy level. So here's beryllium. It has, what, two electrons. Here's boron. It has three. And carbon has four valence electrons. But they're all in the exact same energy level. So they have the same shielding due to the electrons, the inner electrons here. Each of these elements has a different atomic number, but the valence electrons are all in the same energy level, so they're shielded by the same number of what? The same number of the inner electrons. Now let's look at the effective nuclear charge for the three elements we talked about, beryllium, boron, and carbon. This time it's different, plus 2, plus 3, and plus 4. That's because the positive charge of the nucleus increases in proportion to the atomic number. The shielding constant stays the same, right, because they have the same amount of inner electrons. So Z effective, which is going to be the atomic number, or the number of protons, minus S, which is the shielding constant, that will increase across the period, which means the valence electrons are attracted to the nucleus with a greater force. 
The magnitude of the force between the protons in the nucleus and the electrons in the orbitals can be calculated using Coulomb's law, which is right here. Force equals K, which is Coulomb's constant, which is 9 times 10 to the 9th Newton meter squared per Coulomb squared. Q1 is a charge on the first object, so we can say that's the nucleus. Q2 is a charge on the second object, which are the electrons and r squared is the distance between the two objects. Applying Coulomb's law to atoms provides very useful information. Consider hydrogen. Z effective for hydrogen is 1. You get that by Z effective is the one proton minus zero inner electrons, right? Because here's your one electron. So Z effective is 1. So the effective charge of this nucleus is E, the elementary charge. And the charge on an electron is always E. It's actually minus E, but we're dealing with absolute values here. We just want to find the magnitude of the force. We plug that into Coulomb's law down here. KEE -E over R squared, and we get the force is KE squared over R squared. Now let's apply Coulomb's law to helium. The Z effective for helium is 2 because it has two protons, zero inner electrons, so Z effective is 2. The effective charge of the nucleus is now 2E, and the charge of an electron is still E. We plug that into Coulomb's law, and right here you can see the 2E and the E, and the force is 2KE squared R squared. Now we can compare hydrogen and helium. The force between the valence electron, remember hydrogen only has one electron, is this, Ke squared over R squared. The force between the valence electrons and helium, and it has two, is two Ke squared over R squared. So the force between the nucleus and the electrons in helium is larger than the force between the nucleus and the electron in hydrogen. This force pulls the valence electrons of helium in closer to the nucleus. So how does this affect the radius of the atoms? Helium will be smaller than hydrogen since its outer electrons are in the same energy shell but they experience a stronger attraction to the nucleus. That pulls the outer electrons closer to the nucleus resulting in helium having a smaller radius than hydrogen. Time for lithium. First we'll calculate Z effective. As always it's the atomic number Z minus the shielding constant and here you can see lithium has two shielding electrons. So 3 minus 2 is 1. We plug it into Coulomb's law, and we get the force between the nucleus and any one of the valence electrons is Ke squared over R squared. Now let's compare lithium to hydrogen. Note that the Z effective for both is exactly the same, Ke squared over R squared, but lithium has valence electrons in a higher energy level. How do you think this affects the radii of the atoms? All right, you can see here's the one shell, here's the two shell out here with lithium. Well, in this case, the higher energy level makes the distance between the nucleus and the valence electrons in lithium larger than that of hydrogen. Lithium versus hydrogen. The electrical force acting on the valence electrons would be the same if the valence electrons were the same distance from the nucleus. But lithium's valence electrons are at a higher energy level, so they're farther away from the nucleus. This, this makes lithium larger than hydrogen just due to the energy level of its outer shell. It also, another factor, it reduces the electrical attraction of the nucleus because it's farther away. Atoms within a group, which are at a higher period, are larger. So here's your periods. The groups go this way. So if you have an atom here, this atom, I'll just draw, it's not to scale or anything, this will be larger than this atom. Let's move on to beryllium. First we'll calculate Z effective, which is the atomic number, which is 4 for beryllium, minus the shielding constant, which is 2, that's the number of valence electrons, so we get 2. We now plug that into Coulomb's law, and let's see what we get we get a force equal to 2Ke squared over R squared, the effective force between the nucleus and any of the valence electrons.
let's compare lithium to beryllium. We notice that lithium has a force between its nucleus of Ke squared over R squared. Beryllium has a greater force. So how do you think the radii of these two atoms compare? Take a second and we pull this out and we notice that their valence electrons are in the same energy level. So the initial radii are the same. However, the ZF and so the force of beryllium is larger than that of lithium. So the larger force will now pull beryllium's electrons closer to it. Therefore, the radius of lithium is larger than that of beryllium. Lithium versus beryllium. Their valence electrons are in the same energy level, so the shielding effect is the same. Also, the distance from the nucleus due to the energy level is the same. However, beryllium's atomic number is larger than lithium's. That results in a larger force pulling beryllium's electrons towards a the nucleus. Therefore, beryllium's radius is smaller than lithium's.